This week's episode of This Is Only A Test is brought to you by Huawei's MateBook X Pro. Winner of 27 Global Awards now comes with Windows Hello. Unlock your Huawei MateBook X Pro with a touch of your fingerprint. Secure, fast, and no password to remember. And for a limited time, get a free $300 gift card with purchase. Visit a Microsoft store near you today. Hey, let's start the show. For Thursday, June 28th, 2018, welcome to This Is Only A Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Hey, there was music that time. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. That was some funny stuff, man. Yeah, I think only like 500 people saw that. When I'm alluding to, if you watch the video version of this podcast, and there is a video version if you're a podcast only listener, uh, is that last week's export of this video for some reason was missing our audio cue. So the intro sound music that you just heard, no one heard in the video, and all you saw was. Three people jamming. So somebody edited and published the podcast that way? That someone Who was that? Well, that was Adobe Media Encoder <laughs> that did that. Yeah. And then Kishore's voice is also cut off in the last like twenty minutes of oddly, the podcast. That was oddly, really ad- weird. Adobe only hates specific portions of my contribution <laughs> to the podcast. It was right at the moment of science. Oh it, my. Was, it was it was funky. Uh on, uh, th- quickly corrected and the video is corrected and out now. But for those 500 of you who saw the the first beta version of that episode, well, congratulations. Mm. It's, it's preserved somewhere on Twitter, that, that, that opening at least. Top story this week. Hey, let's talk about that Westworld finale. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. I, lo- I will say I loved how I opened up Twitter last night and there was messages from both you and your wife that are basically like, that messed us up. Basically. At, like, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. We did watch it together, hmm. <laughs> as we should. Uh, we're not going to talk about that, because not everyone in this room, and probably a lot of you haven't seen the finale yet, but I want to talk about it. Uh, we're actually recording this episode way early in the week, because as you're listening to this, I'm not in San Francisco. I'm on a trip. I'm in New York City. I'm there for, uh, and I, I cringe as I say this, I'm there for my baby moon. Not because I'm not cringing, not because I have a baby. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure we had baby moons 10 years ago. Exactly. No. I think this is a new millennial thing. Yeah, we just had right? a baby. <laughs> Millennials are like, we want to take more vacations. Let's create something artificial. Or it's the, the, the baby birthing industrial complex has now built in travel into, into it. But mm. I was told that it is customary, and custom meaning maybe for the past five years, yep. seven years that this has been done, that... Uh, expectant parents are encouraged to make some tor- type of big trip leading up to their in their second trimester I while hear they you. can still travel. And so we're going to New York. Dan and I are heading over to the, the Big Apple, for, not for work, just for funsies. I hear you. You were told. I was told. <laughs> you were told. And I was told. Me- I, you know, Comic-Con's coming. I can't afford to take these days off. There's stuff to do. But New York is a great happening. choice. Um, your schedule full of stuff? Are you no, gonna do? I have a list. I put a call out on Twitter uh, a few days ago about uh, things to do. And of course, I've been in New York a couple times, mostly for work, for New York Comic Con. And when I go on those trips, I have like my rotation, my four things I need to do. I got to have a Shake Shack burger. I got to go to the halal cart. I got to get a pizza, a slice from Artichokes. Uh, I got to maybe go to Momofuku. But I think this time I'm going to try to do some other things. So yeah, I still visit a lot of my favorite places and museums. The Museum of Moving Image, of course, which Danica hasn't been to since the Jim Henson ab- exhibit opened up. We'll go to the Natural History Museum. Um, got some good recommendations, though, for things like the Brooklyn Museum. Also, there's a new spy museum, apparently, that Ooh. just opened, a $50 million spy museum. I saw the one in D.C. years ago. I have never been to that one. I heard that one's amazing. That one's fun. Uh, and uh, just a f- you know, few things here and there. Going to see a show. Going to see, gonna see in and of itself. Very excited for that. Two giant thumbs up. Wow. Uh, and uh, But open to ideas, open to suggestions. When's, I know you were there recently, Kishore. Yeah, I went to a VR arcade. Um, 
I don't know if I would do that with Danica. That might just get her. Be allowed to go. Yeah, that might get you kicked off your baby moon. Yeah. But I I would do some surfing to see if there are any late night VR activities that you might be able Mm. to indulge in because there were a few LBEs out there. Oh, ooh, I'd be down for an LBE. Yeah. Uh, It's the first time I think I've been in New York in the summer, too. Uh, Mostly, usually we go in the fall. Uh, for for work so it's going to be like 91 degrees blistering hot i am not looking forward to the heat and humidity stay inside during the hot part go out yeah. late at night I, uh, eat yeah. your eat your faces off yes I, I definitely plan on doing that when's the last time you were in new york jeremy oh my gosh i i don't even remember wow I, no it was it was many 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 years ago mm. i don't i don't recall i'm not a huge fan of new york city it's too much city for me it is the the the, the first time as an adult i went was with tested when we went first went to the uh, intrepid wow. and new york maker affair and uh it just read like downtown upon downtown upon downtown you go to the subway <coughs> yeah. wait 10 minutes get out and it's still downtown it's non-stop and I love I love the shows there. I've been to see several Broadway shows when I was a kid. I enjoyed that, but it does seem like the city never stopped, and I just need a little quiet sometimes. Mm. Yeah. My mom is still worried every time I go to New York because when I was ten, uh, we got into a fight in Manhattan, and I walked away from her, and I got separated from her by myself, wandering around Manhattan. In the uh, how old were you? I was ten, so it was nineteen eighty seven. Terrifying. And I wandered around, but I had a subway map. And so I actually walked back to our hotel. I went to the Hard Rock Cafe, which is where I needed to go because I needed to get a Hard Rock Cafe T-shirt. Yeah. That was my goal. That's, I, I, I hear you. But I didn't have enough money to buy it. Oh, no. I finally turned myself in to Grand Central Station to the cops there, and they reunited me with my mom after eight hours separated. This is in the 80s? Yeah, this is in the late 80s. I actually gave- This is Lost in New York. My sure favorite- vision favorite part is i gave somebody directions on how to use the subway not from new york i yeah. just randomly gave people directions this is uh, their, the their subway is so good every time i go i love just becoming an expert on the subway and then forgetting it all the day after it's it's a really good subway system i like it i love the mta uh so i guess that's a call out for other recommendations if you love going to new york or if you live in the new york area I'm going to be there. I'll, I'll be there as you're listening to this. Please tweet at me, at Chan for your recommendations, because I have a pretty open schedule. We're, we're, it's going to be weird to be there and not have an event to go to um, and, and be able to just, uh, wander around. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. We have a short podcast this week because, uh, because we're recording early. But, so we're going we're gonna to actually hold a, a, a lot of the latter half of this podcast to talk about maybe some baby things, baby tech. But we'll get through. Let's get to our next segment, which is. Which is. <laughs> I hit it, dude. So how about that Westworld finale? Nope. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> was season two everything you wanted it to be? No. Wow. Easily no. I'll, I'll just rate it that because I know, Jeremy, you are you're ready to binge the show. Well, I don't have any reason to wait anymore. I could have started, and I haven't. I don't know. Maybe I'm not looking forward to doing to that commitment. The, the weekly the weekly check-in? Well, now you got 10 hours. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like a huge commitment to so watch I 10 think hours. Knowing that you have a 10-hour commitment to binge the sh- season, mm-hmm. and I knowing what I think you liked about the first season, which mm-hmm. was the the world building of theme park and the video game analogies and the loops of the robots. Mm-hmm. I think you will be disappointed by the second season because it's not about that. It's all, all, all philosophy, but all it's the all time. there. It's just subjects, right? I mean, cause I did enjoy thinking about it in terms of a massively multiplayer game, right? That's that part is all gone. It's there, right? You just got to read between the lines. Well, like at you, the end of the first season, and this is a spoiler warning for those of you who have not watched, watched the first season, the park basically falls apart. Oh, really? Does it though? It does. does it's it? chaos. I don't know. I'm just. I... Okay. It's uh, to not spoil details, plot points about the second season. The thing I will say, I read this from uh, a slash film editor. Uh, this season felt like message board television, which meant it was written knowing full well 
that there would be people on Reddit, there'd be people on, on podcasts, people on forums, analyzing every little bit mm. of their season from the first, you know how, remember, the, they, they opened the, b- before the second season, one of the big promo things was a, a troll, essentially, of uh, releasing a video with all the plot details, and it was... It was R- Rickroll. It, it was Rickroll, exactly. It was a Westworld Rickroll. Like, that awareness of the internet savvy and the sleuthing that the fans do, mm-hmm. and maybe not necessarily writing to cater to that, but the awareness of that has, I think, affected the writing, where so they think- can't write a show and feel like it's satisfactory without the aware with w- without trying to please those hardcore fans because the subreddits were the writer's connection to the feedback that's how they were getting feedback if it wasn't personally and and, and, and i'm sure there's plenty of feedback if you just like search hashtag westworld on, on twitter right there's the mass market feedback but they were in the the subreddits for sure mm. and i i really that's that's a very small percentage of the audience you think they should have ignored that i think they absolutely should have ignored it and i'm not saying that they wrote plot points in that were in response to Mm -hmm. the theories because they wrote the season well ahead of of this but knowing that the show would be scrutinized in this way i think forced them into a corner where they had to write a puzzle the show the the second season was this giant you know thousand piece puzzle and i don't think television shows need to be puzzles they just need to be good pieces of television what was the resolution in the end for you there was resolution. Okay. Yes. Isn't there yeah. going to be another season? There's going to be another season. I, I also think that any of these shows now, at the end of the season, you can consider those the end of the show. And that's, I think, a good thing. You want to write each season. Yeah, leave threads open, but write it as if it was the end of the show and have it be a, a conclusion. And I think they at least did that for Westworld season two. I don't know. I don't know when we can talk about it. We may never talk about it on right. this podcast. Well, you just talked about it without talking about it. Good job. Well, we might all be hosts here. Who knows? Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, are we all living in a simulacrum yeah. of reality? What is what is real? Uh, one thing I wanted to also shout out in terms of television, huge recommendation. Do you guys watch American Vandal last I, year? I watched the, uh, the f- what, I guess it was the first season, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. Did you know it won a Peabody? What? The show? Isn't that a serious award? It's a for storytelling. Journalism? For storytelling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, American Vandal is a Netflix original show that was a, a parody uh, tribute you know, in the style of true crime stories, except set in high school. Uh, multi-part series, heavily inspired by the storytelling uh, and journalism of uh, Serial. The podcast. Uh, the podcast and, and S-Town. And, and Making a murder. Making a murder, for sure. Uh, had a lot of those tropes, but told so well, so effectively as a mockumentary style, uh, serialized investigative journalism set again in high school. They won a Peabody. I was blown away. 98% it, Rotten Tomatoes. It is so good. It is w- one of the best pieces of television it, last year. It, it is great, but it's a, it's a farce. I can't imagine them doing it again. They're doing it again. They announced season two. It's going to be set not at that same school, but another school. It's a totally different cast. To- well, the documentarians. So the conceit of the show was the show was edited and filmed by the AV Club. Okay. An AV Club pro- a student project. Yeah. And so... Just as Sarah Koenig was, you know, who did uh, yeah. This American Life and Serial, infused herself in the show, in, in Serial, hmm. the student who documented American Vandal infused himself a little bit into in, in, the politics and, and the storytelling. And that student, the cast, that, that, that character will be the same documentarian for season two, but at another school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a little bit of a teaser Netflix has put out. I'm super excited. I, the, the, the creators, the scripting, the writing. I, Ars Technica has a really good interview with the creators about how they research social media habits and real high school behavior and make it feel authentic. Uh, there's one episode where it's like a recap of a party from multiple perspectives and unreliable narrators and everyone's perspective of what happened at, throughout the evening of this party. And uh, it, it's a technical feat as well how they managed to document that whole thing. A couple quick shout outs for me. Handmaid's Tale is riveting. It's amazing. That season's about to wrap up. It's hard. It's really hard to watch. It is so good. Um, Voltron season six was amazing. Amazing. Like better than last season? Yes. This one actually had some resolution. These are little half seasons, right? Yeah. This one was really stellar. I will have to return to it. I'm sure I'll get some hate in the comments, but I really like that show. It's really, it's a mix of funny. They did like an MMO takeoff in the middle just as like a respite that was that was pretty great 
Uh, and finally, I'll say, I tried to watch Luke Cage. Can't get into it. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think the ship might have sailed on those. We finished the toys that made us last night. <gasps> we f- oh, we got so to uh, Sanrio, the Hello Kitty episode. Yeah, what'd you think about that Learned one? Learned a lot. Had, yep. Had no idea. I thought it was hilarious that all of these animals <laughs> aren't necessarily animals, uh, but they all, you know, they resemble animals. They don't. They're not even friends. They're like that's the thing is that they they, they don't they're not friends with each other. They're not uh, related, but they can hang out if there's a party. They get that's when they get together. The show is best if you don't know about yeah. if you're not a hardcore fan. I think if you are a fan, Star Wars, Transformers, you may those, those may are not still be good. those are great. I, I enjoyed the spit out of them, but I think that you're maybe you're looking for more. Yeah, no, I was highly informed by I would say half of these that I I knew nothing about, half of the other shows in the series. And the the idea that Hello Kitty has a pet cat. I had no idea. It, it's hilarious. It, it's like Mickey, Mickey, uh, Mickey, you mean, you uh, mean Pluto, Pluto, Mickey and Pluto, yeah. and 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 Goofy. Uh, Goofy. Yeah. yeah, weird. Which one's the dog? Which what? What did what evolutionary things happen? There? You know the the reasoning behind that is Disney says if if uh, one of their characters can walk on two legs, it can talk. Oh, that's a rule. Yeah, N- pants not required, but <laughs> no, it can talk. Yep, absolutely. Okay, I didn't know that either. Um, and uh, one final thing. I'm going to put this in pop culture and not technology. Mario Aces mm-hmm. is out. The new Nintendo Switch game. Yes. Th- is this a high-profile release, you think? Is this is a big thing? I mean, it's the highest uh, profile they've got right now. Until it, Smash Brothers or, or yeah. uh, Super Smash. Well, that's yeah. the big one. Yeah. This, they, we were at E3. There was a big uh, area for Mario Aces, and it's big on their store right now. It's a Mario game, right? It's a full $60 game. I remember, I don't know when the last tennis game was, but it was. I remember playing, uh, I guess it was on... Game Boy? Oh, no, no. It would have been like GameCube or something that I played on. Uh, and it, I love those tennis games. They're just super fun. And so I, I picked this up, and I got, it, man, is this, it has a weird story mode I was not ready for, where you're, it's almost like a Mario 3 style walking around the world, and right. then you land on the circle, and you enter it. There's this exposition, and then you have to play tennis against a bad guy, and if you win, then you can progress through the world. Mario Tennis was on Virtual Boy in 95. Yes, I played that. That was the packet. That came with it. Yeah. Was there a Mario Tennis on Game Boy? I don't know, man. They're they're typically good games. They inc- they include a lot of Game Boy Color. Arcadey elements. It's not just Virtua Tennis. You know, there's like charge ups. And there's so many in this game that they actually include a simple play mode. Well, where it removes a lot of the power ups and just gives you straight tennis. Many reviews have called it akin to a, a, a fighting game. Well, sensibly, it's a yeah. sports game. Because you have to retaliate correctly. Exactly. And there's power and there's energy levels and, and a combo moves. And the skill curve is akin to that of a fighting game. And so when you say the story mode is like a Mario 3 style wandering the world, but then really you're just playing tennis matches, it reminds me of like Mortal Kombat when they did the, the reboot recently. They had a great story mode, but then it was just narrative that was spliced between matches. Mm combat matches i did like when you <clears throat> when you boot up the game you go straight into the story mode and i didn't realize for about a two days that i could back out yeah and just play tennis that's that's what other so, reviews say once you get to the first boss and you've learned all the moves get out of there and start just playing i tennis. was really happy to discover that because yeah. now i'm playing tournaments and i played online oh. it's a little choppy i played against one yeah it's one laggy guy. the servers aren't quite you up played to it sh- no i've been watching people play on twitch and then um <laughs> and then I don't know. I I bought a a Mario themed shirt for Ira yesterday. Okay. Uh, at a store, and he was like telling me about all their moves. He's like, you know, King Boo can can make his ball curve, and I was like, well, how do you know this? Kids know more about games that they don't own than the kid than the games they do own because the anticipation of owning a game they learn from places like Twitch and the internet. Yeah. Like I, I brought uh, Breath of the Wild to um, nephew's place uh, last winter and. They didn't have a switch back then, and they knew the walkthrough. They were and because they watched the they watched the YouTube videos and they watched the Twitch streams. Are you enjoying Mario Aces, Jeremy? I, you know, I'm gonna go back to it uh, on occasion. I'm uh, not is not Zelda. I'm not hooked on it. Uh, have you played doubles? No, doubles is I think super fun. Is that where it's at? Doubles two v two. Each person holds one. Uh, no, you got to do a, a, a pro controller. 
Oh. Like a side, two controllers, essentially. Okay. Two controllers, uh, and um, I guess you technically... Let me see how many buttons you need. You technically could play on one Joy-Con, I think. I think, yeah, with the shoulder button. Okay. Two shoulder buttons. Uh, but uh, we have a pro controller, and two, playing two, be, two people versus computer or two yeah. people versus two online, you That's can fun. do... Uh, like two people one in one household and mm-hmm. two people in another household and, and match make it, it's way more fun everyone gets their own little charge up boost yeah. up. Uh, I think you share you char- share charge up boost share. within your team so yeah. you, you, you also use it up I, I went over to, to Gary's and played it with him and it was a lot of yelling come use your charge up no you use the charge up because a little bit of pressure when you use the charge up because you got to aim yep aim it with the gyro yeah I, I think it's a lot of fun I don't know about worth 60 bucks but <laughs> So real technology news, real tech news, tech news that may be uh, may, may be relevant to you. A lot of Apple stuff this week. Uh, Apple conceded. They 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 uh, they they conceded. They gave in. They did to the complaints. They're putting the headphone jack back in. No, not that one. No. People have been complaining about the new butterfly switches on their keyboards since the MacBook 2014, I want to say, the one that's just the MacBook, not the Air or the Pro. That's now also the same switch that you have on your Pro. Some of those keys get stuck. Dust can get in there. They're not great. Apple is now offering free repairs wow. of those and even retroactively refunding repairs if you had one done of those keyboards, um, which is an acknowledgement that those the design may be may be flawed. Okay. Does that mean they're going to change the design no, in a new MacBook? No, I don't think so at all. They're going to tweak it. Tweak it maybe. Yeah. 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 But it's going to be that low throw, non not great tactile feel. I've gotten used to it. I do Ugh. prefer the the older style, but the I've f- gotten used to it. The fact that you, the chiclet keys, you yeah. like like the the full one. Yeah, the yeah. fact that you have to get used to the key <laughs> keyboard and it, it be a, a settling on that design. Yeah. That's maybe not. Don't you think eventually they're just going to a f- touch screen? I don't like. Don't say that. You know what Stop I mean? Stop it. No. B-b-b-b-b-b-b- no. No. With little haptic pulses. <laughs> oh, duh. oh, haptic pulses. I bet you. S- sorry, taptic pulses. It's yeah, haptic. Sorry. I bet you if you brought up this podcast from five years ago, there would be that same conversation. They must be going to touch screen. Oh, mm. I don't mean that. I don't yeah. mean up there. I mean the keyboard. Like they're just going to go to some kind of tactile touch screen. Not uh-huh. tactile. Just a. You know what I mean? I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah taptic. You, you you lightly touch on the key. Like an iPhone. And and it pops back at you. Yeah. That taptic feedback. Mm-hmm. I hate that idea. Yeah. Yuck. I hate it. Mechanical they, keyboards. They're going there, though. They keep going closer and closer. Uh, if for the in, in the interest of what? Not repairability. Same thing sure. as an iPhone. Like, the keyboard is whatever you want it to be. No, programmable keyboards, I think, are less interesting than a lot of people think. I don't want it, Norm. I'm just saying that that's what the argument will be. That's what the argument will be. There's also rumors now that Apple is going to unveil high-end water-resistant AirPods with noise cancellation. The AirPod, I think it's a, it's a funny thing to say now, but people have taken to it. The AirPod is their best product they've made in years, and maybe that's a commentary on the stagnant state of a lot of their other products. For people who don't care about sound quality. Yep, yeah. That's true. Yeah, and, and their AirPods, I think, are better sound quality than the, than the bundle, bundle oh, pods. Probably, probably. They have a little more bass response. Than that, but they're not isolating. They no, don't, they don't seal. They are not isolating, nor are they noise canceling. And the rumor from Bloomberg is that they're working on high end AirPods. High AirPods are already kind of high end. They're like a hundred fifty bucks or something for for wireless headphones. Yeah. And most people, that's like a really nice pair of cans for a lot of people. Uh, well, they may charge more. They probably will charge more to add noise cancellation and water resistance. Um, I care about battery life and range. That's what I care about more. Than, than For sure, it? battery life. And I see people wearing them out in the rain all the time. In their ears? Yeah. yeah. They're not. It's probably not great. a great deal. Yeah. I mean, your ears are natural, like little umbrellas yeah. for AirPods. <laughs> right. Uh, biometric sensors in future AirPods, a heart rate sensor. You think that could be useful? Oh, that's interesting. Can they get accurate measurements from from the ear? Because usually me, that's sure. on ear lobe. Right. So, <laughs> you got to clip it? Yeah, you, you got to clip the, it. In. There's a little clip, the EEG also reader, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the the battery stuff that hopefully gets better. It's a very your, your limitation is the volume, or the the not the sound volume, but the space the, of the uh, of the physical ID of the device. Does it not last multiple days already? 
No. Really? No, it's only a couple hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I think the interesting place for them to go is expand bone conduction because you can do that at lower energy, I believe, because it's more vibration based than it is yeah. like actual amplification of sound. And I see that for, for speaker, uh, sorry, for microphone use, right? Like you have the AirPods in and then you don't need to speak as loud to let the AirPods know what you're saying for commands. It has really also really poor Siri activation. Like there's no lot, not a lot of input you can do. You can tap it twice, but you can't change volume or anything. And, and, and the Siri thing, I, I think, is spotty. But it's reliable. Like the big thing is that it just works. It's one of those few devices that they make now that the pairing is seamless, the the syncing is seamless, and and as Bluetooth gets better, because the limitation, I think, is on Bluetooth at all energy for them, as Bluetooth gets better, it will get better. Um, all right. Any other bits of actual technology news we want to cover? Anything? Any Not new really. products? It's pretty early in the week, so yeah. I'm sure like major news has broken. Uh, well, Tesla we... Semi will not have a ludicrous mode, but it will have a Mad Max mode. What, Mad Max mode <sighs> is where they just push other cars off the road. <laughs> so <laughs> it well they haven't said what it does, but it will affect the uh, blind spot. So this, this is a, this was a kind of a silly tweet that um, Elon Musk did. Uh, Tesla semi re really happening. Uh, they I think Tesla released a video of one of those semis driving across the Golden Gate Bridge right. to Santa Rosa. Of so it's happening. happening. It, that it future frankly, that might, was might be the more important yeah thing yeah. than uh, than the cars. Well, and it might face some resistance. Autonomous uh, semi trucks will put a lot of people out of jobs in the future and. Um, and you know Kamala Harris talks about this all the time, and how we got to. It's inevitable. Um, business will capitalism will make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's just about how do you adapt to that workforce. Same as, with ride sharing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the cars currently do none of the Tesla cars have full uh, autopilot, right? Right now, it's the the EAP mode, enhanced autopilot, is uh, steering assist right now, where it can on freeways change uh not change lanes you can uh, follow the paths to make turns it can't even differentiate between like a fork in the road it won't know which side to go in for the fork based on navigation um tesla and elon musk have promised that in the next year full autopilot features will start rolling out and it makes a lot of sense for the semis to have that now just because they're still testing these features doesn't mean that these features aren't enabled in some cars specifically his car mm. So he has posted pictures of his custom beta autopilot on his personal Tesla. And that's where he confirmed that a Mad Max autopilot blind spot feature was there. So this, the way this works is that blind spots are really tough for cars. I think even right now in the Teslas, they don't have cameras that spot the blind spots easily. And it's a trade-off between safety and convenience because the blind spot, you have to tr if you trust the system that much, you're telling the user basically not to look over their shoulder and I don't think they're ready for users not to have to look over their shoulder for the autopilot to work. But when that happens for like lane changes, auto lane changes, people move at different speeds. A lane change is like the scariest thing an, an uh, uh, autonomous car can do on the freeway because you don't know how fast the car behind you in the adjacent lane is moving. And so right now there are three settings for, in his beta version of autopilot, three settings for, the, uh, for how crazy, how aggressive the we expect the other cars in the freeway to be so the three settings are currently standard aggressive and mad max and mad max and mad max i guess the assumption is that telling the autopilot system the people around you are crazy are changing lanes all the time are changing their speeds all the time and so the car is going to be have to match their aggressiveness in terms of speeding up to change a lane and how much distance you give the car because Lane changes. The car, the autonomous car, is always going to be is going to is going to be a defensive driver, and it'll be very easy for people to take advantage of autonomous cars, um, in keeping them in their lanes and not giving you openings for lane changes. <laughs> there should be a music cue when they hit the Mad Max mode. Yeah, it's just just a scream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Model Three owners, a new uh, update is rolling out, and I, I know this because it's on the forums. Uh, a summon mode is finally going to be available. And uh, which is a phone feature. You can move the car one mile per hour into your garage or out of a parking spot and, and kind of control the car 
uh, using the sensors around it. Why do that when Jeremy can just come over and push your car? That's true. <laughs> yeah. I'll summon, summon Jeremy Williams. It's funny because it's true. Uh, and they finally have details about uh, internet connectivity, right? So uh, people who bought Model S's, Model X's, Model 3's have enjoyed uh, free internet, essentially, right? Yeah. But I think with their at and partner with LTE. And, and technically in the Model S contract, it was free internet for four years for their music streaming huh. and for maps and for traffic. Yep. That's not going to be the case it's very soon. So there's going to be two tiers. Anyone who buys a Tesla will get the base internet, which gets you maps, not satellite maps, and no traffic and no music streaming. But if you want music streaming, if you want traffic highlights, and if you want satellite maps, you have to pay $100 a year to get that. Every car, uh, the S and the X and the premium Model 3s will get a free year of that premium internet. And but you can't um, use your phone's internet service. So that's the other update that just got updated. Wi-Fi will be built in, so you can. If you have unlimited phone internet, you can just tether your phone to Wi-Fi, and you'll get those features as well. And so you'll get the maps through your phone. You'll get through through your the phone. Tesla the, maps. The Tesla maps. Yeah, yeah. Through the <coughs> internet. Of, All right. Of your phone. Cool. That seems reasonable. And they're still talking about possibly incorporating CarPlay, Android Auto. I don't Maybe. know about that. Yeah, that seems like a ways away. It seems like if enough people want it, they would eventually do it. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, yeah. that's at a high level, fleet level decision, right? So yeah. yeah. And the good thing for anyone who already owns one of those cars or buys one before July 1st is they get grandfathered into the lifetime unlimited. And we're talking about how, how long were you planning to own this car? 15 years? $1,500, right? Which is it's, it's a lot of money, but yep. over a span of 15 years, not not crazy amount. Uh, let's talk about... Baby tech. Oh, right. Let's do it. Oh, we're doing it? Oh, we're doing it? We got, so, we got like 15 minutes left. So, Norm, do. this is your first child. Yes. That and I know of. You are a connected individual. Yes. Let's just say. Yeah. So, let's get the ones that, like, the key items that you've gotten <coughs> off the list already. Car? Got a car. We can, we can scratch that off. Check. It's a safe car? I, I hope so. The safe government car. testing still to be determined. Okay. So, we can cross that one off the list. Um, So, the world of interior baby connected devices has gotten out of control yeah just in the past humans few have years. been raising babies for tens of thousands of years what type of technology do i really need you don't need much i think probably when we had kids uh like roughly about the same time we had limited tech i only had really one piece of tech which is the baby monitor mm. oh those baby monitors man they sound so good now Oh God! The what baby do you mean they sound? Oh, you mean like the well, baby the monitors? Quality. When back in our day, when we were babies, yes, like they were, <laughs> they were ham radios. Is there a baby? I can't hear. If they, <laughs> might, they might be crying because it was analog. Yeah, and now they're just so beautifully digital. It's even gorgeous. back when we had kids, they uh -huh. were like Game Boy level quality video. It was not. Oh, I'm good. just talking about audio. But no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, What's even the then, just like eight, ten years ago, it was still pretty bad. So, baby monitor. Yeah. Now, with the advent of Nest Cams and everything mm -hmm. else, that's mm -hmm. what you get. It'll it'll automatically push notify you when a crying starts. So happening. decibel levels, right? Thresholds for yeah. for alerts. Because mm. remember, the old baby monitors had like these bars. It was like yeah. signal quality bars mm -hmm. for the for decibel. You, yeah. you, and then you set you set your own threshold. Oh, it's like reaching near the top. It means baby's crying. Mm -hmm. Also, like some of the monitors now will monitor based off of those decibel recordings how much the baby is sleeping and the oh. quote unquote quality of the sleep. So over time, it's it's uh, using that data. And what about skeletal modeling? Can I put like a, a leap motion above the baby and I'll like skeletal model the baby for sleep patterns or uh, connect? Well, I don't know of that device yet. I think all of this is a mistake because it just encourages you to go into the room more often. Yep. Really. So all of this is, I mean, it's, all for, it's all placebo. Baby's going to baby. The monitor is useful from just like a video, especially early on, gives you some peace of mind. Yeah. But like all those advanced features, I don't think are, are useful to you. So you're saying leave the baby alone. Well, there, there's yeah. a huge school of thought about leaving the baby alone when the baby cries. What about SIDS? Well, no. I mean, obviously that's a concern, but like th that's even changed. Like should you put the baby on the, on the belly, oh on the God. back, on the belly, on oh. the back? But <coughs> in sleep sack, baby. In terms, sleep sack. In terms of the crying, yeah. there's a whole cry it out school of thought where once you put the baby down, uh, you continue to lengthen the amount of time it takes for you to re enter the room. What do the, the longitudinal studies say about this? 
Uh, well, actually, they tend to agree with what Jeremy's ju- Let essentially cry, cry saying. out. No, I mean, there's different, but that's more of a parenting technique because it affects how the child potentially behaves later in life. There's some indication of that. Any indication, any association between the type of music they'll like? <laughs> I don't, that Mozart thing has been pretty debunked. Mm. Uh, but I will say, if I were you, I would just use one of those other cameras that you might just have and use it as a baby monitor. Really? Not by a specific I mean, I baby use, monitor, baby monitor. I mean, I wouldn't use your ring where you have to subscribe to the service and, like, you know, the baby has to hit the doorbell for it to activate. But, like, <laughs> I, at this point, because the video quality is so good on other mm-hmm. devices, I don't know about the specific, like, high end baby monitors add value to I, <clears throat> eight years ago, when I had my second child, I set up a laptop in her room yeah. with it constantly plugged in so it never shut off. Right. And I set up Skype to auto answer. So I, c- I would Skype that computer from my phone for a video conference. And then I would, that's how, I, that was my video. So the equivalent of that is like the, uh, the Alexa, like the, Le- the Alexa spot, right? You yeah. didn't have that auto receive the phone call. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go out there and say, don't do that system. <laughs> that system I, I kind of want CCTV, ridic- like uh, setting up a, a dedicated monitor TV that's always on yeah. in the room. I mm-hmm. think you guys are probably going to do that. They also, to extend upon this, now there's baby monitors that are essentially like bands that you wrap around your baby that do real-time monitoring of like pulse and even oxygen level. It's like strapping Whoa. an Apple Watch to your child. Okay. No, nope. you don't think so? No. Doctors say no. Doctors say just let the baby get, baby get a baby. Unless there's a medical reason to have that kind of monitoring? No. All right. What about the connected changing pad? Can I sell you on this? What is that? It I- automatically takes weights. as When you do your changing, it logs the time that you're making your, your changes on, on your diaper. It, um, it will, uh, there is some indication that it will even be able to read temperature readings. Mm-hmm. What? What's, what, what's what? the point of it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little widget as a gift, <laughs> as as a Father's Day gift, uh, a little widget that's like a timer, a smart timer that lets you like, th- that will that'll give you notifications. This It's been this long since, you know, last changing, last crying, last fed, mm-hmm. and just like stack these these t- alerts and timers. Uh, but it's a simple timer. You know, it's, it's just like a stopwatch. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is that sufficient? Uh, uh, yeah, you don't need this at all. Okay. I mean, you don't even know, need what you're talking about. Okay, just because baby's gonna poop silicone, when baby. silicone pad that's easy to clean. Baby's gonna poop when baby's gonna poop. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, make it comfortable for you to for it to change. I, I don't. I, think I don't think you guys get it. I want to incorporate more technology. No, no, but I'm coming to places where you can. But these were are are ridiculous. Okay. So ones I think are are particularly interesting is sleep tracking, not for the baby, for you. Mm. Interesting. Because I, I think. That. That's one area where because you're not sleeping very much, your sense of time uh, gets really messed up. I'm not going to be sleeping much. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> do we have to talk to him about how this works? Yes. How, what, what's, a, what's on average a good amount of sleep? Well, I mean, if the baby have. has to sleep every three hours, like the rule of thumb is when the baby's sleeping, you should be sleeping, um, especially early on. It doesn't quite work out that way. But I think what's important about this is because we know how much cognitive decline happens when you don't get enough sleep and at night, I think logging your sleep is actually pretty important because you can see where like maybe you or your partner aren't kind of shouldering equal loads. Whoa, I don't, want, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want that data. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one actually has a, a pretty big positive benefit. So sleep tracker for yourself. For yourself. Got it. Uh, there are um, connect. There, are, this is another ridiculous one. There are connected diaper genies and like all that kind of stuff. Don't get that. You don't need that. What, what's a connected diaper genie? It just tells you when the the trash bin is full ah, of diapers. It. Diaper genie is like a, a hermetically sealed. Can. You need one of those so that oh. the smell doesn't get out. Smell. Oh, poop I need smells. One for the dog too. Sure. Poop smells. All right. All right. I think get a good thermometer, and they do have connected thermometers that are good. And forehead tends to be um, really uh, not as reliable as some other methods. And so there are good ratings on good thermometers. You don't need uh, to go full rectal, though. Are you talking about butt stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are thermometers that allow you to do butt and mouth, but mm. I recommend getting two separate devices. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Uh, and then All the right. other one is, especially if you don't have a good eater, if we have a picky eater, mm-hmm. is some way of tracking their food consumption. Yeah. And everything I'm talking about is just like- It's not going to be food for a while, man. Yeah, well, but I mean, also just like breastfeeding, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They, yeah. Are, they do have connected breast pumps now that log that for you. Don't do that. That's a way for you to sh- share the load, my friend. Let Danica get some sleep at night. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do some feeding. Yep. Interesting. It's a wonderful time. <laughs> it is <laughs> great. It's quiet. <laughs> like You just hang out, and then baby falls asleep on your tummy. It's great. You got the glider. I think the most important tech you can get is, like, what is the media that you can consume while you're taking care of the baby? like, And, and, and the ergonomics of that media mm-hmm. to, for media consumption. Like, one, how do you one hand a tablet and not, the mount? And, and not keep the baby up. Exactly. Right. Yeah. AirPods are critical in this situation. Ah, okay. Yeah, can AirPod the Apple TV? Can I share a easy? fun piece of technology with you? Yes. This is, I discovered this when my babies were, were babies, um, and it is called Alpha Baby. It will convert a MacBook, any kind of MacBook or Macintosh, to a baby toy where every key is does not do what it's supposed to do. Like they can do crazy keystrokes, they can't access anything. Every single button just makes a funny sound and puts a shape on the screen. Oh, so they boom, 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 boom. But this is not touchscreen. This is tactile. Oh no, no, no! It turns it's absolutely. In, well, turns your keys. when you got some crappy butterfly keys, you get no tactile. <laughs> baby don't know. So you, you just tur- they make this for Windows too, but they call it something else. Okay, but mechanical fi- keyboard that might be fun. Find a, s- a software tool like that. They're free, and it just it converts your computer because the baby eventually will want to do what you're doing, and they see you on the computer. Exactly. <laughs> How do I edit this? E- export this podcast. I'm telling you, Alpha, <laughs> Alpha Baby is fantastic. All it's, right, it's the first. It's like pre iPad level engagement with technology. I love the idea of making a custom mechanical keyboard for a baby. With big buttons, big sw- and, and, and oh, using, like, using like, like a Duplo keyboard. Yes, but using the same switches, so it's very t- teach the baby early to like the tactile feel, <laughs> and to respond to the clickiness and the clackiness yep. of mechanical keyboards. Do they prefer I, the red keys or the black ooh, keys? Yeah, yeah. You can. <laughs> They're Cherry MXers. Get them, get them, get them early. <laughs> yes. I will say the one thing that wasn't available that I think would be useful now is some sort of Alexa device. I know everyone's going to have privacy concerns about that, especially an always listening device with with a baby in the room. But I think voice control for you in the baby's nursery is a nice feature for wow. music, for just controlling and being able to actually function. Yeah. Uh, because even with like an intercom feature, being able to talk to your partner or set alarms or do whatever, I think one of those is going to be invaluable. Yeah. And by the way, like that technology is probably the most used technology by my kids early on. Like before... Certainly before, like, cell phone years. Voice activated. Growing up speaker. with an with, uh, with Echo-style device, mm. it, that is, like, their gateway because they can talk to it. They don't have to type anything. Better than screens for their eyeballs. I mean, my daughter plays music that way. She asks how to spell things that way. She checks her math homework on that. Everything, Skyrim. Everything. Yep. I've gotten to the point where she'll come and ask me something, and I'll say, just go ask Alexa because it's teaching her to be resourceful. New math. Yeah. Also, I don't know how to spell half the words he asked me how to spell. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll like peek around the corner sometimes. Dictionary is not useful for spelling words. I think the important thing is half the stuff you're told you need, you probably don't actually need. Uh, well, they certainly industrial want, complex. They're certainly happy to sell it to you. Ah, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, we used to do a podcast on, uh, on Tested called A Bunch of Dads. So we may have to bring that back. And get Will here, yeah, to to lead that. Oh, fun! As we're closer, as as I'm making these purchases and and testing some of this gear, uh, and would love your recommendations out there as well. Before we move to our next segment, I want to thank the sponsor of this week's episode again, and that is Huawei's MateBook X Pro, winner of 27 awards at Mobile World Congress, including Best of Show Laptop, Best Innovation, Best Design, Editor's Choice, and Reader's Choice. With Windows Hello, you can unlock your Huawei MateBook X Pro with a touch of your fingerprint. It's secure, fast, and no password to remember. Huawei's MateBook X Pro is now available at Microsoft Stores, Amazon, and Newegg.com. And for a limited time, you can get a free $300 gift card with purchase. Just visit a Microsoft Store near you today. The VR Minute. Virtual reality this week. 
I wanted to mix it up a little bit. We're going to do Moment of Science next because I sure. got I got to run. Okay. Uh, but um, something came out today. You know what? By the time this comes out, it will be four three days ago. Yes. <laughs> but but uh, Oculus TV launches today. And oh. Did you get a chance to check it out this past weekend? I did not. Okay. Um, Let me tell you about it. It is it's it's kind of interesting. It's a little weird. <clears throat> it is a new app that's available for free in the store. And it's when you launch it, you come to a room with a couch on it, and you're on the couch. It's not social, at all. Not that I can tell, because there's no room for anyone else in the in the room. Oh, <laughs> or on the couch. So, um, but it is a giant TV screen, and that's it. You look around; it's this Oculus themed room, hovering in midair, and here's your screen. And inside that room, you can download other apps, such as uh, Facebook Video. And it will project that video content onto the screen in this, in this room, mm. right? <clears throat> so what? What? It, and what, uh, where's the thing? So that sounds not terribly different from big screen. Uh, sure. You know, it, I suppose so. Except big screen is social. Yeah. And you can do things inside of it. This is just a screen. And uh, the other two apps that run on that screen are Pluto TV, which is interesting. I, I've, I've never used this no. before, but it's an yeah. over-the-top service. And there's a ton of stations on it. It's like having a TV cable. Okay. You know, you can scroll through all the stations. Th they oh. didn't get YouTube TV. This They got some lesser known ones. No, Red dude. Bull. No, no, there's definitely no YouTube anywhere on this. But there's real movies. Like I was okay. watching, you know, tra Showtime. Trading Places. No, I mean on Pluto. Okay, okay. And it's ad supported so that it will like break. And oh, show it's you free. Okay. Ad. Oh, yeah, it's free. Okay. Um, and then um, there's another free one. It's not, uh, I'm not seeing it listed here. Um, oh, uh, Red Bull. Got it. Yep, Red Bull TV. And yep. then the, th so the Facebook, Red Bull, and uh, Pluto. Pluto are the only three that actually show anything on that screen. It also acts as a kind of strange hub for three other apps that you probably already have if you have the services, which yeah. is Netflix, Hulu, and Showtime. Yeah, so kind of like Apple TV in that sense. Launches those, those apps. Those all launch their own screens. Sure. And you go watch them in that space. Yeah. And I want it all on one screen. And there's a, s there is like an aggregator of what's on, but yeah. it's only for the ones that play on that screen. Ugh. Right? And it's it's so it's sort of strange. Plus, all those apps that you had to download, all those yeah. services, they become other icons in your main dashboard. Which, if you launch, it just launches Oculus TV. That's weird. It is, yeah. So I wish that those would just go away because I don't need two ways to get into yeah. the same app. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I yeah. like that it's kind of aggregated. One, um, one, just have it. I mean, it sounds like there's uh, some infrastructure problems for that, and also a lack of partnerships. They need to, yeah get some better partnerships. It would be nice if there was some way to sync up, even if they're not in the same room. Like if we could watch something and be connected via voice chat and synced up, that'd be cool. Uh, it would be nice. I um, bet you there'll be a third party way to do that, just like yeah, Netflix has. Maybe so. I will say the video looks quite good. Like the streaming quality mm -hmm. looks very good. I, wa I was watching a couple things and perfectly comfortable. And you know, this is also encouraging people to watch 2D video. This is not, I mean, Facebook video has yeah. 180, has 3D, has 360, but this is about traditional 2D rectangular content. They've provided a way to do that. Like yeah. they've done the 3D environment and yeah. the, te the tech to make it stream onto the screen. I just need it all. I, I need the social aspect. I need more services. Mm -hmm. that's gonna that's gonna be and this is all go only this is not for the pc version of the rift i should have said that let's go you're mm -hmm. right only but you know whatever i mean it's free you know yep. it's, it's a nice little add-on for people mm -hmm. who bought the go yeah and hopefully they'll have an opportunity to improve on that in the future last thing i'll say is echo combat was amazing they had their open beta yep. this weekend if you haven't watched the projections episode where you guys tried out there are some slight tweaks that are different but it was totally a lot of fun the it was definitely beta the matchmaking kind of sucked yep um, but you know they'll I think work that out. But yeah. the gameplay itself was stellar. Every game was fun. It was hard to get into a match together. We finally nailed it. We finally did it one time, but we were never all in the same team. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's better. It's better than when in Rec Royale you just shot me in the back of the head. Oh my no god, reason. I felt bad about that for days. We had a Rec Royale game where there you can play team modes, where you can informally yeah. team up, and the three of us land on top of a mountain. And I shot you. We ran the bushes. We ran the like, bushes. Jeremy, there's a guy there. <laughs> I'm gonna get him. And I shot. And then oh, I, heard I, the remember, shore. I remember. Like, I remember being, shooting me. I remember being like, I don't see a guy here. <laughs> <laughs> and you died. Like, oh, I was Kishore the whole time. It's what happens in the battle royale world. Kishore said, "I think we should all take a moment to see what everyone else is wearing before we start the next match." Yeah. 
that's a good idea. We're having lots of fun in, in VR. Uh, hope to see you guys in Rec Royale. I think that does it for uh, VR Minute and maybe for the podcast. We, have a, yeah. we just have to head out because we have other stuff. It's a short episode this week. I apologize. Um, I'm going to be in New York, I, and I will be back next week for podcasting. So I'll tell you about my New York adventures then. Um, and if you have Nintendo Switch friend codes, put them in the comments below so we can all play Mario Aces <laughs> together. Yeah. That's all I'll be taking on the plane. Any last things you guys want to cover? Oh, my. Nope. nope. That's all I got. Oh, good. We'll take your baby tech recommendations, New York City travel recommendations, and thanks for listening. We got an outro? Yeah, sure. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Do, 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 do. Go. Hi there. I didn't see you. That's it. So let me see if I can start talking like this. And <laughs> I, I've had so much Jomo lately because. <laughs> I think of you every time I hear people talk like that now. I'm having Jomo about the Switch stuff. I'm okay Switch missing out. No, oh, Switch is so good. It's coming. Just don't tell my kid. Okay. Right. Bye.